So I think um, we're going to have to um, perhaps have an abbreviated meeting. I was going to um, obviously try to allow for uh, to hear from the public early, but right. um, I'm I'm not seeing uh, anyone in attendance other than the uh, commission members. So I think what I can say is um, we can call the meeting to order. Uh, and I, I don't know if uh, if anyone is set up to take notes. Um, if if we're probably going to be having a fairly quick meeting, uh, and by fairly quick, I mean within about an hour. Um, is there anyone who could take notes during that time? Um, this is being recorded, right? So it is. It is. Yeah, um, I can. I can try to, I'll, I'll take notes, but don't, don't fault me if I miss something, okay? So other folks, if you can also do some highlights. I haven't taken notes in like a while. <laughs> well, I mean, one of the things that we need to do in any event is, um, you know, for the minute meetings, we need to just mark when the meeting is called to order. Yeah. Um, when we touch on an agenda item, if there's a motion relating to that agenda item, um, and then uh, how the commission voted on that motion and right. when we vote to adjourn. So that's, that's all we really need to have. That's all it's, we need. Yep. Okay. For the minutes. I think I can, I think I can do that. That doesn't seem like too difficult. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Um, so, uh, then the first thing I want to do is, um, is to uh, ask if there's any other uh, agenda items. Uh, does everyone have a copy of the agenda up? Uh, I, uh, I can share a sc share screen at. Yeah, that would be good. That might take, okay. I have to go. I, I have it on my phone, so I can well, see it on my phone. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, which is uh, looking at uh, the conversations we're going to have, fall planning in general, and the role of, of commissioners, the chair, and the town staff liaison, which was something that we were asked to discuss uh, in our last meeting. Uh, I'll also note that we borrowed at uh, Jennifer's suggestion uh, some of the language that Northampton uses to notify the public that, um, that there are opportunities at the beginning of our meetings to present uh, to make remarks and that uh, unfortunately we can't open up at, at the end of the meetings again and do that. Uh, so that's, that's what we've got on the agenda for right now. Um, I believe I've notified all of you by email that um, as far as making sure we're up to nine members again, uh, we went through some interviews um, there will be some names presented to that within about, um, within the next month, the town council will have an opportunity to vote on that. Uh, okay. Such that uh, by September, we may have new members um, and we may be back up to nine. Uh, because the commission, um, uh, the the uh, term on the commission ends as of June thirtieth. The um, we're we're we always run into this issue in uh, the July and August meetings that we have fewer members able to attend um, during that period and with travel and other things. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so let me just ask everyone if there was anything else that. Uh, we need to add to the agenda because if not, then I think everything can be done within uh, that no. time frame. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so we're going to call the meeting to, uh, to order or? Yes, yeah, so the meeting was called to order at 6.05. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I put down, 6.05, so. Yep. All right, cool. Um, as as far as approval of the June minutes, uh, I haven't looked at the July ones uh, yet. The July ones will probably 
uh, because we haven't been able to talk about the June ones and what shifts uh, we need to make. Um, you know, I, I think the July ones may also be a little bit on, on the longer side, more of a report of everything that was said, yeah. uh, as opposed to a, um, the, the actions of the commission. So I, I would say, for example, that um, because we knew that there were uh, presentations going to be made um, by the town councilors who are coming and by the Shabazzes uh, and by uh, Deborah Snow from Bridges for Unity, and that was all on our agenda, and because they made certain suggestions, um, we don't have to put down what some of those suggestions were, but um, because we didn't really vote on them, we have on the June minute meetings, um, we have motions with regard to the, um, the actual presentations that we would have, uh, the conversations that we would have as community conversations. Um, and so those would need to be in the minutes, but the um, other uh, the other language found throughout would not need to be in there. What I think I'd recommend doing is um, I I will send around uh, an abbreviated version of of the June and July uh, meeting minutes, and then we can compare those two at our next meeting and see whether uh, people feel like there needs to be more in there from what I cut out or uh, if that, if the, the shorter version would make sense. Um, does that seem like a, uh, a workable plan? Yep. I think that would also allow, uh, uh, Deb, I see you, Petra. So, um, uh, that would also allow Deb to, to be here. Um, when we're discussing it, which I think would be helpful. All right, um, so we're going to table the votes on those meeting minutes uh, for right now. Then uh, the next thing would be any uh, reports that need to be made. I've already made one, I suppose, with regard to uh, looking for other commissioners and the expectation of what uh, will be happening with commissioners coming on. Um, I, I don't know if others, I know that everybody else is involved in different aspects of, um, of town government as well. And so if there's anything that relates back to what we're doing on the commission, um, I'd, I'd love to, to hear about it if commissioners have anything they can share. Well, I, I know, I think it was the last meeting, maybe the last one that we were gonna look at um, maybe um, collaborating with some of uh, you know other the, these other institutions of higher learning and also the high school on programming but since everybody's going to go virtual with the exception of Amherst I'm not sure how that is going to work you know um, and Amherst pretty much the campus is closed to everyone who's not a student faculty or staff so um, so I think that that's going to going to be something that either we have to see what, I know at UMass, we're gonna put a list of uh, programs in place, um, but I'm not sure how much of it is going to deal with what we're doing here. Let's put it this way. Um, so, you know, maybe that there will be something to talk around November. I think by that time, we'll know exactly what's happening with the Southern institutions, and then we can look at collaborating with some of the groups on, you know, Black History Month and other, and other places that you know we've been able to to look at those areas of collaboration, but I think right now it's going to be almost diff, almost impossible to collaborate with some of these groups because they still. I mean, we just at, at UMass we just pivoted, you know, Thursday, so right. <laughs> everybody's just you know trying to not drop all these balls we have up in the air. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw it on the news hour, um, so. Uh, I, I think one of the things we need to look at is uh, what groups we, we can work with within town. Um, so for example, if we're looking at 
um, anti-racism and uh, equity issues in education, that is something that perhaps we need to delay because uh, educators are, are trying their best to figure out what's happening uh, with schools going forward. Um, you know, I think we could probably have a conversation around health uh, and COVID and what is happening in our town and uh, perhaps arrange a way for it to be virtual so that uh, we can have, and, and I know we're still working out the technology on having breakout groups so that there can be small groups having conversations. But I think that that's what, um, what people are, are looking for is to be able to have an understanding of what's happening in town and to be able to discuss it and how it's impacting uh, different groups of people within the town of Amherst. You know, that's a good question. Uh, Jennifer, do you know if, because I haven't been able to find it, maybe it's me, um, do we break down our numbers in town based on race, gender, and all this other stuff? Do we have that breakdown when it comes to oh. COVID? Oh. Because I, I, I only see whole numbers, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That would come from the health department, and I... Okay. And... um. I know they're just, they're not really releasing any information about any I know. But person that has COVID, but they might have the demographics of it and I, that I can check with them tomorrow. Yeah, I think that um, would be important because I mean, as, as we know, we all been reading all this stuff. I mean, some communities, you know, black communities is like 30 to 38% infection rate and some Latino communities, which I was startled the other day by reading, it can be up to 46%, um, you know, infection rate. So I think, based on some of the communities and groups, ethnic groups that we have here in town, it would be interesting to see, you know, if there's groups that we need to target with more education, what type of education, is it in English, is it in Vietnamese, is it in Cambodia, in Spanish, Portuguese, whatever. You see what I'm saying? I think that would yep. be good. So not directly related to COVID, but direct at COVID because COVID is just impacts everything, unfortunately. Right, correct, absolutely. Um, and so I, I think that, like, I went into the town manager's office today and I was like, oh, what if we do, like, a, if we have artists go out to, you know, the different complexes? And then I was like, oh, wait, COVID. So it's like everything that I can possibly think of is not able to happen in the way that I can imagine it because of COVID. Um, so it means you have to think outside the box a little bit for things. So I know that the Jones Library met with Sharon Cherry and they have a lot of money for... Um, to purchase books. So one of the things that I've heard from the, some community members is they kind of want groups that are outside of town a little bit, but they were thinking of, I was thinking maybe they could form a book club right. um, around African-American authors or, you know, a, they can pick, you know, whatever type diversity, whatever that is. And that would just be through the library and whatever, who, whomever joins that group that's not necessarily associated with anything. Um, and I know that Paul is going to do three community conversations because we've just heard over and over and over and over again that the community wants to have conversations with the town manager. And so that will happen. And I know, that, and I'd be interested to hear what people say about this. He was, we were thinking it would be good for him to do one in Spanish as opposed to having a translation translator with us at that time. Um, and so, I guess the question is like the outreach would be really important for that one so that people are aware. Um, and I don't, you know, I think even if it's only three or four people that show that that's still okay. Um, so we've, there's that piece. And then we have the survey, which I've given to community members to just kind of uh, get some feedback. So I'm revamping it yet again. And I think another piece which would be good um, from suggestions from commissioners would be to um, how to make sure it's outreached properly, like that outreach with the survey so that it goes to everyone, other than putting it in the United States Postal Service mail. Yeah, that's not working too well these days. Well, I don't know. But <laughs> and, and, well, the other thing is we would like to have it translated in multiple languages, so it makes it difficult if you want to mail it too, then it all of a sudden becomes a yeah, a different issue. So 
and um, I guess that I would look for you, if possible, for to translate um, into Portuguese. Did you say you yeah, translated yeah, into Portuguese? That yeah. would be fantastic. And um, we have Spanish is covered. And so I think we're looking for Mandarin and Cambodian, if anybody knows anybody who could, or I can look over, that I could look over in Creole too. Well, that would be good too. So that's where we are with that. Apparently the survey is a lot harder than I just anticipated. Cause you know, sometimes I get these things in my head and it's like, oh, we'll just ask six, seven questions and send it out. But that's, you know, it takes, you need a lot of thought behind it to make sure you get the mm -hmm. correct data that you need. So that's that. That was a lot of rundown. I don't know if you guys were asking for all of that, but that's what's going on. No, that's good. That's good to know. So uh, can can you um, remind us what which survey you're talking about? Oh yeah. So you know the community conversation that wasn't a community conversation. I was trying to get feedback from folks because I think that one of the things that we I mean we could do it without the feedback is just to have you know like you said different workshops or uh, webinars or or focus groups but it, you know it would be nice to know who needs what but we could just advertise that we were going to do one on just say redlining right and then whomever shows shows but it just seems like it might so i don't know we might not need to do the survey now that i think about it but it just seems like it would be good to get community input uh, well, I, this I is good that you oh mm -hmm. sorry Oh, I was just going to say, I think the survey is valuable. I think it's really, yeah. especially if we get it translated um, and if we, you know, can support you as commissioners in doing some of the um, outreach around it, because that's the biggest piece of work really is, you know, getting it into people's hands. But um, I think it'd be really valuable because sometimes it's like we can do all the planning in the world, but if it's not what people want, then, right. um, so I'd really love to do the survey. All right. Yeah, um, we need to get a sense of what a response rate would look like and what, what that would mean as far as us actually having information on, on what the community wants, right? Um, so uh, I don't know if we we're looking at something like a, a, an online survey, who we lose if we do an online survey. So I- um, Especially I, when everyone's meeting virtually. Right, so I, for that piece of it right there, I, any avenue of a way that I could go and outreach, it would go. So it would cover socials, it would be on Facebook, the link to it, to the web page. It would be on our website. It would, I would, bring it to the Amherst Survival Center and try and have it in some type of box so people could, you know, put it back in if they like. Um, or if, if, even if I have to spend like a lunch day out there or a couple of lunch days out there, I would go to complexes. I would try and spread it as far as possible. Um, and then send it to the, to the commissioners, to the council, so they can send it to their constituents. So, I mean, as many avenues that I can think of I I would use so if someone has one outside of that that would be great I mean I'm more than willing on a Saturday or the day that the mobile food pantry comes or the day that I, you know I, I don't know yeah the mobile market would be good right the so, new mobile market yep yeah, I would I could go over there and on the day that that comes out and you know and hand out the survey and you know answer people's questions if they have a have them I think for your safety, like rather than having people put it in a box, like maybe maybe we can, um, you know, do it so that it's like a person is asking someone and helping them fill it out so that there's not so much like exchange of touching. I don't know. I just feel concerned about you gathering a bunch of papers that have been turned in. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. I know. So yeah. I think I, I'm just trying to avoid any of it having to fall on the staff at the ASC because they're already and not bread alone because they're already so overwhelmed. Um, yeah. So which is why I was thinking like I also don't want it to fall all on you either. Like if we as commissioners could divvy up some of that, I think that yeah. would be really helpful. 
Yep. And um, Petra, you have your the the link to the youth, so we will hand you a stack and send you out. <laughs> Or, so or let youth are seeing Patrick each other. Do it on text or Facebook or. Oh, right. I'm, I'm, see, I'm still so like pre, living a pre COVID mind. It's terrible. Petra, Petra could send it on Instagram, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the young folks. Yes. On that. Yes. <laughs> right, Petra? Because <laughs> everybody's like, hey, UMass, what are these kids? That's all they're working on is Instagram these days. Instagram so and. Instagram we... right now. Can we get it on TikTok? Because everybody would see it if we could do that. <laughs> um, so, yep. And if anybody has any suggestions, I mean, I can either send what I have out of the survey to you all now, or if anybody has specific suggestions about questions to ask on the survey, I welcome that. I, I mean, so when I first started the survey, it started out with do you or how you, and then I kind of changed it to I've experienced the following, you know what I mean? Just to make it a little more personable, but even still there's, you know, some wordplay to happen. So it's also hard because we kind of have two different groups of people. We have a group of who are experiencing these issues and then we have a group that either sees them or doesn't see them, but they're happening. And so the ed it's, you wouldn't want to send out two separate and then that makes it hard because then you're, you know, grouping people even more. And so it's just a little, I don't know. Any suggestions are welcome. So I'm yeah, assuming. That's right. Sorry, Go I was ahead, just going to, yeah, I was just going to ask, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, without seeing the questions that, um, that, you know, asking about the demographic information of who's responding will give a, a real perception difference um, among groups if that if the perception is different among groups so if, if the people who are living it mm -hmm. recognize something different from those who are um, purporting to witness it but are, are witnessing something different than what someone is experiencing that information mm -hmm. would come in to uh, to you through the, the questionnaire as well yep and so not to switch off. Oh, Gizzy, did you want to say something about the survey? No, that's okay. Okay. So um, at the D5 meeting, it was a very interesting D5 meeting a couple weeks back. Um, but uh, people spoke and they made really valid points about the policing of the masks in, in town. And so, and keeping keeping their names silent or, you know, so that at the meeting, nothing was going to be, nobody's name was being used in anything that was going to be forwarded over to the council to review. But, you know, basically she stated that the community needs to step up, right? So the police have been all, are always called when it should be, sometimes it could be handled through the community, right? So if we were all being good community members to each other, we wouldn't have to police in the, in the downtown area. However, getting all of the community on one page is much harder than it seems, right? And then we also have to remember some of our community members and I are, are younger and or students and and might and just you know I'm not gonna wear my mask and then they don't wear it so but she raised a good point about community and the police and how that works so what's the procedure right now is people call the police no they're going to be ambassadors oh okay so we're gonna have ambassadors in town okay yeah that makes sense actually I like that so what yeah. are we were gonna do at UMass if the students were to come back. I mean, we'll still have some of those. I think I'm the sorry. thought was. Mm -hmm. You said they're going to be ambassadors. Uh, or do you there mean will that, be ambassadors. That are um, the police officers, or are you suggesting that it's community right. members are agreeing to be ambassadors? I, I don't, I'm not quite sure who they're hiring, but there will be ambassadors and they will not be uh, uniformed police officers. Yeah, probably have a t shirt or something, because I know they have that concept in New York City where they have, uh, you know, community ambassadors that goes and they have masks and, you know, hand sanitizers and all that stuff. And they just engage people, you know, 
you know, just giving them information. And of course, sometimes they get cast out, but most of the time they said they're successful and just, and they, they obviously trained on the escalation, you know, tactics oh, and all this other stuff. They, I think so, yes. I'm, I'm imagining them similar to the CSOs. I don't know who was around when CSOs were in mm -hmm. the downtown area, mm -hmm. but we used to have CSOs here that wore like little tan outfits and. Yeah. I'm assuming that's community safety officer or something like that. I think that was the other yes. idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just trying to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, but something like that where people will be uh, reaching out on, on that issue. And I, I don't know that that will do away with this notion that um, some groups of people are being approached more quickly, are being uh, told right. that even if you're distancing, that's not good enough, as opposed to other groups of people. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that was issue. that was spoke of, and so that basically that it it would prevent people from going to town because they feel like they will be targeted, right? So, um, it's definitely something to think about. Like, how do how do we make this work? So, um, in our last meeting, we talked about um, if we had community conversations. Ideally, we'd want to bring in um, an expert who can talk with people who are local uh, and who are managing things here in Amherst and also make sure there's time for community conversation. Um, so in order for us to move forward with that, if that's still what we think is what we would recommend, I guess I have three questions. One, um, do we want to... Uh, continue to say that this is sponsored by us and not do it in concert with uh, the town council, the town manager's office, which, you know, obviously, Jen, you would know what's what you could do with that and um, or with like the library or other groups around town. So that's that's one question. Um, oh, is it? I'm sorry, I just I didn't quite. Un are you saying not to in to be co-sponsors with these groups or to be co-sponsors with this group? Well, that's the question is whether we would want to uh, always, whatever planning we do, do with those other groups. And if we're gonna do that, we probably are gonna have to delegate um, authority between meetings for kind of one person to speak for the commission with, with that group. And so maybe we'll, we'll take turns. We can figure out how to do that if we're going to have um, some kind of, of partnership for each of these conversations because we are we don't purport to be the expert in uh in policing or in uh, health but you know we are going to be aware of and thoughtful about equity issues within those areas so if we're going to have a conversation about um anti-racism and health or anti-racism in education um we would want to have someone who is in Amherst focused on that issue, uh, A, they have to agree to the timing of it because if they're going to be part of a conversation and B, if we're going to suggest that they talk with an expert um, who we bring in from outside who can bring up some issues that maybe we're not thinking about in Amherst but we should be thinking about, um, then we need to get agreement to have that conversation where they're going to be challenged about the work that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, but, so the, the first question is partnership. Uh, the second question is um, to do something all at one time or to do it uh, on separate days, like have a, a presentation and then a follow-up conversation. Uh, and the third uh, question is, um, do we uh, end up with a, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I, when I couldn't get all three questions out at once, I, I lost track of the third one, I think. Um, but, but uh, you know, just trying to see whether this is actually something that is tenable that we can plan. Um, do we need two months out, three months out for each of, of these types of things so that we can uh, work with others to get it done? So would this be before the survey or after the survey? Or during the survey, you don't know. Okay. Yeah. I think after the survey, probably will be best because then we'll have more information, right, to direct that 
that conversation. Again, it all depends. I, we, I haven't seen the survey, so it depends on what kind of asking question we ask. Then we could get, and if everybody's saying, this is, this is what's happening to me, then we, we can say, okay, this is an area that we definitely need to, to discuss right away or target right away to, for this type of community conversation. I agree, Sid. I think that if if we could, we could all, I can't remember on the survey, but um, if we wanted to say like, prioritize, you know, the following five topics or add ones that you don't see on here or something like that. So we could get mm -hmm. a gauge on what people are wanting to talk about. And the one thought I just had um, about the partnership idea is that I have heard very consistently that something that makes people uncomfortable coming to talk about some of their concerns and experiences is when there are official people in the room. Um, so I guess it's a two part question. Like one, are these opportunities that we're gonna have these conversations or talks going to have to go under um, open meeting law? Um, and if like can can they be confidential i guess or can they be a level of confidentiality that's different than our regular meetings so um i can just respond if we were able to get breakout rooms going when you record a larger event um the it it doesn't automatically record the breakout session i think it usually leaves the host on the screen while people are in breakout rooms um, so if we were able to do that, which we would need to do for community conversation in any event, then, um, you know, they would have conversations in smaller groups that would only be kept as private as the people within that group will keep it private. Um, so sure. I don't think we could guarantee <laughs> that anything stated would never be repeated. I, I can't promise that. But well, different yeah, that, that, from public yeah, record. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It, 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 we'd have to caution because, you know, I, I know for fact that some meetings at UMass have taken place was supposed to be confidential, but somebody had one of these that was videotaping the screen, right? So we have to make sure that, you know, I don't know, I don't know how confidential it could be because I've seen, well, I've I seen students other people videotaped with it. With I mean, phone. I think it depends on the community conversation that's being had, too, right? Because if you we just can't can guarantee confidentiality, I think that's where we. See I mean, that. I think yeah. right, and I and they would need to be opened up in, in the same sense of saying like we are asking people to honor the right, honor exactly. system and during right, this you know during this meeting. It's not um, just an honor system; it would be illegal for someone to record something uh, without getting approval in advance. Absolutely, which is something right, but you don't have to record it to spread it, right? That's right. Like, that's right. You can just be like in the grocery store, be like, oh, yeah, I saw her. She said this, right? So, um, yeah, I understand that it wouldn't be confidential. I guess I was asking, would it need to become public record like the oh, yeah. comments yeah. in our meetings do? No, because no, you guys won't be so voting could, on anything. So we could say, you know, share at your own risk, knowing that, you know, people, we're going to ask you to be confidential, but we can't control individual people's. Right. choices, but that this is going to be different from our regular meetings in that it won't become public record. I feel like that's a pretty big, you know, that's one of the main reasons why people don't feel comfortable sharing at our meetings. Right. Yeah. So, okay. I see. Um, and then to the other piece, just about like, I hesitate to have um, like an official from the school or an official from the police department, because I've heard so regularly that people don't feel comfortable talking, even in front of town counselors. Yeah, and again, sometimes I think that that might just differ depending on what the conversation or the workout or focus group is, right? Because you'll have those who don't feel that issue, but if they're in a more defined focus group where they're working with the school or something like that, then, then that would be okay but a general conversation about like let's talk about the academics maybe not if that makes sense right like it really i think it depends 
to respond to that, I think if you have breakout rooms where if, if part of the partnership were we are going to have a school official in each breakout group, then I think it would feel like you're reporting to school officials and they are taking notes on what you're saying um, if, if it were about equity in education and people might feel uncomfortable with that if they're trying to have a community conversation. Um, so I, I, I don't know, I'd have to give some thought to uh, what a breakout group would look like where you're having first the conversation with school officials and perhaps someone else who's got expertise or they're presenting something and then you have a conversation that is separate from them and then you come back with community concerns so if you did like um like a three-hour block uh and you did a, a one-hour presentation um and then a 30-minute breakout group uh discussing some of the concerns that are arise come back, present those concerns, meet up in different groups for another 30 minutes to discuss, you know, uh, whether, which concerns rise to the top for you and then bring that back. Um, and I'm, I'm planning something on the fly here. So this is, you know, um, but that, that type of thing would, would allow for some level of uh, anonymity for the, the people who are talking. Um, Yikes. I, I'm just checking, check, checking in because I, I can't see you guys. Um, is Patua in the room? She is. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Oh, okay. I just wanted to say I, I haven't heard from Patua and I would love to. Um, and, I, and I was just going to say, I, I wonder if flipping that order um, that you just said, Matthew, might make sense because like hearing a presentation before you hear about the concerns, I wonder if we need to hear about the concerns first. Um, and then, yeah, I just wanted to check in with Petua. Um, I, would the, would the expert, like, presentation be a separate, uh, well, like, what, so if we have, we're having a community conversation, and then what's the other conversation that's happening? That's my question. So, we haven't planned anything yet. Yeah. So um, what I was imagining uh, was someone coming and saying, uh, so first getting a report from someone in the, the town, this is what we're doing, this is what we think is helpful, this is what we think people don't really know that we're doing, that we think if they did know, they would be uh, happy with, with, with where we're going. And talking with someone else who would say, okay, um, have you thought about this? Have you thought about this practice that perhaps you don't have? Um, and then opening up the, the conversation to community members to talk about like how that presentation speaks to what their actual concerns are um, and whether they feel like hearing directly from uh, our, our health department or our education uh, some, something to do with the school system, whether that would put them in a position uh, to have slightly different concerns and then bring those back. So the, the concern of having a long period of time where people are discussing what they think are real issues, I think there's a benefit to it because then the person who is coming from the town can say, oh, well, I wouldn't have even thought that that was the main issue for me to think about. And let me respond to you on that. Um, the difficulty is, though, that quite often that person isn't necessarily ready to speak to concerns they haven't heard yet. And what you're going to get a lot of is, I hear that. Um, I'm so glad you brought that to my attention. Um, I'm going to give that thought. Uh, so that's what we're, we're losing you. Yeah, we're breaking up a little. I think we do, and we do well. And this is what, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm, um, you froze with your mouth open, man. And right now, on, on, <laughs> the, hey, you <laughs> have to repeat that. Now you're back. Now you're back. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I was just saying that with 
there are three other events in my house right now uh, on video. So, um, so yeah, so that's, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm not wedded to one way or the other. I'm, uh, what I was saying is that uh, if, if we're planning something, we do need to, to present what we are looking for before we partner with anybody else, um, one, and two, before we invite someone else to come in and, and be a speaker. Uh, if particularly if the town is willing to pay someone to come in and offer expertise, quite often um, we don't have full control of what they're willing and, and able to do. Um, so there are some people who just want to facilitate a conversation. There are others who say, my expertise is, um, I can tell you what people have been doing on COVID-19. I have a PowerPoint. You can bring me in to talk about uh, best practices in responses for a town this size or something like that. You know, I can think of somebody who's, you know, probably you guys all know, who's a great facilitator who could touch on the general points and then bring somebody else um, who's also a townie, uh, Professor Barbara Lulz, right? Um, she actually did something for us at UMass just about a month and a half ago. And she was amazing, right? Because she has a way of just, just her engagement um, and the way that she facilitates things are just, you know, amazing. She, she's a social justice educator from Social Justice Education Program. And again, somebody who's been in town for the past 30 years, so she truly understands, um, you know, the town. So somebody like, I'm not saying it should be by the law, but I'm saying somebody like her, right? Um, that's, been, that's been in town, understand town, understand town politics. Um, you know, her kid went through Amos High School, all the elementary schools, all the way to Amos High School and all this other stuff would be somebody like her that I would entrust with a facilitation that would have to be somebody that is in power or an official from the town, right? And she's pretty trustworthy. I would think that we could also hold some of these community conversations and then report back the vital information to the department head or official. Yeah. And then they have the chance or the opportunity to kind of what is that come up with the answers did yeah, anybody I hear that like noise or no i don't i didn't hear anything i heard a zoom zoom like that okay no i didn't hear it but um i just wanted to one do a time i wanted to do a time check because i know that sid has to leave in like 13 minutes um oh, yeah. and I just wanted to, uh, yeah, say that I, I like Jennifer's point. I think that at this point, we don't need to bring experts in because our goal, it seems like right now, is to really hear more from the community and to do it in a very like deliberate way. So I almost think we could have topics and let people share and then, you know, use the, the topics that come up within those to guide if we do want to provide further, you know, education on certain topics. But at this point, I feel like the focus really of what I've been hearing is that people want to talk. I, I hear that the difficulty I've got is as a commission, if part of what we're doing is, um, is educating, um, then the question is, who is getting educated, right? When, when the, our bylaw says that we are um, educating the town on certain issues. Um, I, I don't ever know if that means educating town officials or educating the public more generally or, or what. And if what we're doing is collecting information about how the community feels, um, then I don't know if that, that's something it seems like it would take time for, again, another meeting where the town department then says, here's what uh, we hear, and then they're reframing it for their own meetings and uh, the issues that they think they're hearing from the town. And then you have a discussion with people in the town at that point from them. Um, I, it's a more drawn out process than having the people who are able to affect change sooner, hearing sooner from uh, the town and being able to respond. Um, 
immediately if, if that's something that we're interested in, in seeing happen. So I think we've got different roles and I'm trying to figure out the way to uh, make our role as effective as possible for not just um, pulling information out, but also um, allowing for departments to make changes more quickly uh, while we're all meeting online and all uh, hearing from, from the public from one step removed. Um, yeah, I, I think, go ahead, go ahead, Petra. Um, I think that there's value in um, hearing what other people have to say, uh, like what people, people's experiences are, like as education. Um, and, but I do also think that it would be in, uh, like, it would be important to have um, like people that can make decisions like quickly or effectively in like departments or whatever, just to try and create change. But I think I liked what Jennifer was saying earlier about like having community conversations and then like using the like summary of what we learn from that conversation, whatever it may be and, and sending it to officials or um, department heads to see what they, what they can do and what they can change. Um, and that way it could be more, um, we can be more honest with each other in the community that we're speaking with. Um, and then the information that we get from that conversation can be used to like pressure um, leaders to try and um, listen to the people that they're supposed to be serving. Uh, and I think that, uh, I think the purpose of the community conversations is mostly to just, um, to find like find where the need is and where the power is within the community community to, like if it's if we're talking about businesses maybe we can bring in like black owned business and have like a Q&A session where we talk about like their struggles and what they what they are trying to do um, to survive in Amherst or if they're thriving like how are they thriving in this community um, and then we can have community conversations uh, that could help like people who want to start businesses of their own or or just want to support their businesses like the best way to do that or we can if it's with education we can like have conversations with the younger people or teachers and and other people that interact with the education system just like see what their needs are and what their experiences are and how how their experiences shape like the word the world that they see and then we can send that to like the superintendent or like the president of the a school or whatever and and we can just keep like sending information like we can have those community conversations that are summarized and like not like they're anonymous but like because it's not like attached to a specific person but like the experience that is like collective with everyone in the conversation can be like used to show like there's this is something that's happening again and again and so then if you do this maybe that can help um, future students or future business owners like feel safe or valued in, in the community. I think that's what I would see the community conversations um, being of value and then maybe later we can have like experts or or like the official state like talking about what they've done since like the beginning of the, pa uh, the pandemic and the um, since anti-racism became like a big thing what they've done to like transform their culture in whatever sector they're in. So that's my idea. I love that, Petua. I'm really, yeah, I'm, I'm like fully supportive of those ideas. And I really agree that like, you know, I'm a speech pathologist for my job and what I have to do before anything else is I have to get a baseline. I have to find out where the kids are at before I do any education or teaching or treatment. And I feel like this is an opportunity for us to get a baseline, you know? Um, why would we teach something to somebody if they already know it or if it's not relevant to them? So I, the only difficulty, I, I know that we're now looking at five minutes before um, Sid turns into a pumpkin, um, but uh, so, Last month, we came up with the, the kind of other 
other way of going, which was, you know, um, try to have a conversation, um, maybe even schedule like one a month um, and, and hit on these different issues. And it, it seems like we're, we're going in a different direction this month and saying what we'd like to do is, um, is go back to the, the original idea of those community conversations about different issues and then we report it to um, to a town department, and maybe then we could take further steps down the road. Again, that's a longer term plan, and uh, it is it's not it's not bad for us to take a baseline. Um, I just don't know how effective it is for us to collect the information and then share it. Um, I, I, I hear you uh, particularly on this point of people aren't going to want to speak if it's like 20 people on a Zoom session that are talking with uh, like the police chief, you know, any complaints that they have about the policing, they may just not share at all. Um, and so getting the baseline separate from uh, the chief would be helpful. Uh, and then we could bring something forward. It just seems like it's a, a longer term set of steps. If we'd like to do that, uh, then we need to figure out for the fall how we could see that type of thing happening. I do think that if, depending on, on us having a small group of people uh, and collecting data from that group, maybe it'll be a large group, um, that others might dismiss it or, or might agree to it, depending on whether they want the results that we bring to them. Whereas if they are present, they are subject to um, responding to the people who are there in the room with them. So I, I, I think that there's some benefit to them getting information and, and kind of being present, but, but I agree with you that we don't want to stifle the conversation and we don't want it to be purely led by department heads. This is what people should be focusing on don't mind what's behind the curtain because that's, that's nothing that should concern you. Uh, we do want to hear what people are concerned about in the first instance uh, and, and perhaps educate the town about things that they're not, that they may not be thinking about. How do we do it in the few minutes we have left? I think that like the conversations where we like, like collect data would, and then send it to like the leaders. Then after that's what I was thinking, like, First, we have to figure out what people are needing. And then the first step is like just to ask the leaders to like follow through. And if they don't, then we can like that we can see if they don't because they feel like they're doing something else that's different that works for them or whatever. We can like bring them in to have like a town hall type thing where we can see how see we can hear what they have done and what they're doing, but then also see how, if if it's not meeting the needs of the community that they're supposed to serve like then the community can then have being empowered from the previous conversation they can then um speak their truth and whatever the needs that they want um addressed and then the then then the leader has to respond on the spot like what he or she is going to be doing to make it happen and if they don't then that's when the public decides how they want to move forward i think so I think you also kind of put the department head possibly at risk um, with not no just having anything. Sometimes those can go a couple of different ways when you have department heads there. Um, and so we just, I don't know. I think that reporting the information back might be an extra step, but it might, I mean, but not really either. So we have a community conversation on a Saturday. We take that information on Wednesday and forward it to the department head. And who knows where we are in relation to the meeting, our next HRC meeting. And right? I also like, think that slowing things down is not a bad thing. Like we don't want these to be rushed um, decisions. We want the, you know, like Petra was saying, we want there to be able to be a real consideration about, okay, what are you doing now? Is it working? Is it not working? And um, allow people to have time to organize around that. Um, so I think slowing it down is, a, is an okay thing. 
And I, and I think I, also giving space for those who, giving space for the um, like leaders to like say what they're doing and like express, like just show what they're doing. I think that's also important. And, and we can give them that space too. It, even if it's after the community conversation, then we could say, okay, this is what the people that are in leadership in this specific sector are doing to change their ways. Um, and that that conversation that like presentation can be with like experts or it could be just with them and they just are just presenting what they're doing and the community can then the community can then understand what exactly they're um what exactly they're doing and how they're changing i think so i i wish we had another um half hour i know sid has a seven o'clock meeting at seven o'clock um, and I don't think this puts us in a position to plan a particular um, conversation between now and our September meeting. Um, am, am I wrong on that? Is there anyone who says, no, absolutely, we can do this? Uh, because I think we have to take some responsibility for how the, the meeting is held um, and, and what how we reach out to the community, how we make sure that the conversation has data that would actually be, um, could be reacted to uh, well by, by department heads or whoever else we'd report back to. So are we in a position to plan something or no? Well, well, no I thought we were waiting for the survey though. I was going to say, That's yeah, what I was just gonna say. yeah, I was going to say, I think we're waiting for the survey results. And I think tomorrow I might just ask to and, and to help me out a little bit. Everybody'd send in a couple of questions that would by certain date, and that would be helpful. Absolutely. In case and I've missed Jennifer, something, right? Because do. like I, it's a there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff to be talked about and asked, and I don't want to miss anything. It's important that this goes out and it's correct, and that we have the feedback back for, on it. So the support and and a few questions would be helpful. Yeah, please also, um, you know, give us ways to participate with you in making sure that it gets out because I don't want this all to fall on you. And we also have three new members coming in, hopefully by September. So hopefully they'll have um, ideas about having community conversations as well. Like they've been, you know, two of them are have been involved in a lot of uh, the activities that have been going on in town. So like it would be, it would, that would be great to have Absolutely. their input on, as well moving forward. So it sounds like we can, you know, we don't have to vote on anything because we can just say like, okay, we've done some more thinking on this. We're gonna get some more information from the survey and at our next meeting, we can really get down to the planning. All right, well, that's, that's fine with me. Um, so we're looking at September, uh, I think currently um, just trying to look at a calendar. The September meeting uh, would be Is it the third week, right? Seventeenth of uh, of September um, at six o'clock. Yep, seventeenth. So I, I will be uh, I believe running home from uh, from Springfield and, and hopefully able to hop on at six. Um, but, you know, like uh, other people who are showing up after work, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. I was actually going to ask, would there be any way that people would be open to doing 6.30 on the 17th? I can do it. 6.30 to 8. Yeah. Does that work better for everyone? We just have to check in with Deb and Ben. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could do that works for me. And I'm actually wondering, are we, because the school committee meets quite often, are we gonna have a problem where we're, well, we met early this yeah. week, so maybe not I'm with Ben. So I was yeah. just wondering I mean, if there was I mean, going gotta, to be a I conflict. Go, guys. Yeah. Um, sorry. Thank you, sir. You want, Thanks, you want me to send you this? You're welcome. You want me to send these notes to you, Jennifer? Yes, please. I'll out and I'll do that. Okay. Yes, please. Excellent. Gracias. Have a good Thank you. Night. All right. Have a good night. Cheers. All right. Go save affordable housing. Yep. Um, all right. So, 
you know, when I'm, when I'm in a large meeting and I know that we don't always have to point out when, when we drop a low quorum, because if you don't notice, um, then you can keep having your meeting. When quorum is four and there are three, um, it's a little bit harder <laughs> to, to say that I haven't noticed a, a, a lack of quorum. Um, so, I, so it sounds like everyone is uh, looking to, to see if we can get some community response on, on what people want to hear about. Um, and hopefully we could arrange to somehow get, get that information prior to our next meeting so, so that can be part of the planning. I personally don't think that we, um, I think that there are some issues that are affecting everybody. Um, and so we might miss the priority, but we uh, are gonna need time to arrange with, um, however we, we wanna collect that information. Um, it, you know, I guess if we're just doing, just to give people notice that we're gonna be talking about a particular issue. Um, so, but we can figure that out more in our next meeting. Well, yeah, and hopefully everybody attends the town managers ones because there's vital information to be sought out of those. Those will be in September. So for us to have the survey back, I mean, we will not be able to have the survey back by the next September meeting, right? Like okay. that's asking a lot. I think it, we would have to, I think having it back by October is a more realistic date. Um, but the town manager will go through the month of September having these community conversations and then we can go full blast in ours. And so we might be able to just pick up information from some of those meetings as well. Yeah. No, I think that's a great point, Jennifer. Um, I just want to make one other point, which is, um, you know, while I'm definitely not trying to rush anything, um, cause I, I, think that it's important to let voices be heard. Um, if we're going to Jeez, do something buddy. like have a, um, an impact on something like budgeting, uh, for, for example, the police department, if we're going to have community input on that, because um, people are putting in budgets, and, and Jennifer, you can tell me what the time frame is, but I think they're putting it in usually in February. And um, and then they're hammering things out in March and then they're approving them in May, June. Um, that in order for us to have any impact, we need to be part of the conversation by February, uh, which means, you know, whatever we think there needs to be action items on for the town, we kind of have to discuss that by, you know, November so that we can then revisit it and have an idea of, of what we would suggest or what we think the community would suggest um, by that February timeframe. So I just, that's, that's part of the thinking of trying to have more concretized uh, conversations earlier on. Yeah, and we, again, we can, might be able to just get that, the bulk of that out of Paul's meet, uh, the town manager's community conversations. Absolutely. Um, but I was hoping that we have the survey back by February as well. <laughs> Um, so well, the survey well, would go we'll through. certainly have some version of it. Right. Hey, so I just wanted to check in. Um, are are we are we like is the meeting closed now? Is that what you meant, Matthew? About um, yeah, having just like dropped. Yeah, that we don't have a quorum, and so um, you know, I, ideally we should have had the the vote to adjourn, and then. But then any other deliberations thereafter would would be in violation of open meeting law. So that's that's the kind of so, line we're so we should with probably we motion to adjourn, right? I don't think you can now because I don't vote. Okay, so so we I, I think we have an effective adjournment, yeah, because we just don't.